In this video, we're going to focus on bisectors, both bisectors of line segments and bisectors of angles. You will need your compass and straight edge in order to successfully complete this video. So if you haven't already, pause the video and go retrieve your compass and your straight edge. All right, just as a reminder to yourself, you should be viewing these videos in a place that's quiet and where you're able to focus away from distractions like cell phones and televisions and pets and friends. You want to be in a spot where you can really dial in and absorb the information that's being presented to you in the video. So if you're not, again, go get yourself in a position or get yourself in a place where you're really going to be able to focus in and do your best work. The first construction that we're going to take a look at during the course of the video is to construct the perpendicular bisector of a given line segment. Like the other constructions that we performed, if you're having trouble with this, you can go to this website and it will guide you through the construction one step at a time. You can link to this website uh, via my website also. I'm going to go ahead and start by bisecting line segment EF. And I'm going to do that by putting a little endpoint at both ends of the line segment. And you can see where I've done that in red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go place the point or the point of my compass at one of the two endpoints. In this particular case, I'm going to use endpoint E. I'm going to open up my compass setting so that it's a little bit greater than half the line segment of EF. So this doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be something that's more than one half the length of the given line segment. And once I do that, I'm going to draw a nice big arc and I'm going to draw it so big that it's almost a semicircle. All right, here's the most important part of the construction. You need to keep the compass setting the same. So don't change the compass setting. And without changing the compass setting, I'm going to flip that around and now place the endpoint or the point of my compass at endpoint F. And again, using the same compass setting that you used in order to construct the arc from center E, you're now going to construct the arc from center F. And again, a nice big circle. And what we're really aiming for or shooting for here, I'm going to go get this compass out of the way, is we're looking for the spots where those arcs intersect. And you're going to use those points where those two arcs intersect to connect using your straight edge. So let me go grab my straight edge. And what you have done is you have now constructed the perpendicular bisector of line segment EF. Because that's the perpendicular bisector, it makes all of those angles right angles. It also makes these two segments congruent to each other. And whether you realized it or not, in addition to doing those two things, you have also located by construction the midpoint of line segment EF, all without measuring with a ruler. I think that's really cool. All right, so there's the perpendicular bisector construction. Let's go ahead and in the next example, we're actually going to practice this construction. And if you do this correctly, this is going to end up being a very busy, very complicated diagram. It says use the compass and straight edge to bisect each side of the triangle. So I'm going to start by bisecting the side that has those purple endpoints. And because I'm on the smart board, I kind of have an advantage in the fact that I can use colors. So I'm going to go ahead and make my purple line segments or bisect using my purple endpoints with some purple arcs. So again, the first thing I want to do is put the uh, pointy part of my compass on one of the two endpoints. I want to open up the compass setting until it's a little bit greater than one half the length of the line segment I'm trying to bisect. And then I want to draw a nice big arc. Keeping the compass setting the same, that's way important. I'm going to flip my compass around and I'm going to place the point of my compass at the other end point. And I'm going to construct a second arc. Get the compass out of the way now. And I'm going to draw my nice perpendicular bisector. So you can make this perpendicular bisector as large or as small as you want. I'm going to draw a nice big perpendicular bisector because something kind of cool is going to happen with this triangle. So again, all these angles where the perpendicular bisector intersects the segment are right angles. The two pieces of the line segment are congruent. 
And that guy right there is the midpoint of the left side of the triangle. So I just constructed the perpendicular bisector of the left side of the triangle. Now I'm going to go do the perpendicular bisector for the right side of the triangle. So this one I'm going to color code blue, just to avoid confusion with the arcs that I already made. And the process is the same. I'm going to put the pointy part of my compass at one end point. That's, um, I'm going to open up the compass till it's slightly greater than half the length of the line segment I want to bisect. And I'm going to draw a nice big arc. Once I've got that nice big arc on there, I'm going to flip my compass around, keeping the compass setting the same. And I'm going to go to the other end point. And when I go to draw my second arc, you notice that those two arcs don't bump into each other. The mistake that I made here is I didn't use a compass setting that was more than one half the length of my line segment. So I'm going to have to back up a little bit here. I'm going to have to go undo that arc that I drew and extend my compass setting and make it a little bit bigger. I'm going back to the beginning now. I'm drawing a nice big arc from the end point on the left. Keeping my compass setting the same, I'm going to use the same arc, but now using the end point on the right as my center. I'll grab my compass and get that out of the way. Use my straight edge to go connect the points of intersection. So there is my second perpendicular bisector. And again, in that picture, I want to label my right angles. I want to indicate that the two pieces of that segment are congruent to each other, but not congruent to these green ones over here. And that makes this point of intersection here the midpoint of the right side of my triangle. All right, so you can see how that construction is starting to get pretty busy and we haven't even uh, constructed the perpendicular bisector of the bottom side of the triangle. So now I'm going to repeat that same construction using the line segment with the green endpoints as endpoints. And I'm going to be a little bit more careful this time, and then I'm going to make sure that I do open that compass setting up to so that it's greater than one half of the distance. So a nice big green arc. Keep my compass setting the same, swing it around and go from the other end point. And now I'm looking at those green arcs for the points of intersection. And I'm going to go ahead and construct the perpendicular bisector in there. So again, I can draw in the right angles because where that perpendicular bisector intersects that side, it forms right angles. I know that the two pieces of my line segment are congruent to each other, which is why I marked them with three little hash marks, not congruent to the pieces on the right side of the triangle, not congruent to the pieces on the left side of the triangle. And again, by construction, I've managed to locate the midpoint of that bottom side of the triangle. Pretty cool stuff. One neat little thing to notice here is that all three of the perpendicular bisectors intersected at one point. And if your construction was precise, yours should intersect at one point or pretty close to it as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flip up to the top of the next page so that we can bisect a given angle. So all we're going to do to bisect a given angle is I'm going to take the compass and I'm going to put the point of the compass on the vertex of the angle. And once I put the point of the compass on the vertex of the angle, I'm just going to open that compass up, and it really doesn't matter what compass setting you pick, but I'm going to draw a nice little arc. Once I draw that nice little arc, I'm then going to focus on the points where my arc intersects the sides of my angle. And I'm then going to go use those as centers to draw a couple more arcs. And it doesn't matter what you use as the radius length on your compass setting here, so I'm just going to open it up to something comfortable. And I'm going to draw another arc, and I guess I'm going to try to make this one red to distinguish it from the purple one that I drew in the beginning. And then this is the important part of this compass, or the important part of this construction. Keep the compass setting the same. So I'm going to keep the compass setting the same and flip my compass around. And this time I'm going to go put the point of my compass on the other red dot that I had there. And again, I'm going to go ahead and construct a second red arc. And now that I've constructed that second red arc, it's okay to change the compass 
setting and I'm actually going to go get that compass right out of the way. And I'm going to use my straight edge to connect the vertex of my angle with the point where those two red arcs intersect. Because I've just bisected an angle, I've created two congruent angles in my picture. Angle one is congruent to angle two. All right, just like we did with the perpendicular bisectors, we're going to go ahead and bisect the three angles in the triangle down at the bottom of the page. Let me grab my compass. Drag that along for the ride. So I'm going to start by bisecting the angle at the top of my triangle. So if I'm going to bisect the angle on top of my triangle, I'm going to go put the point of the compass on that vertex, and I'm going to draw a nice big arc. And again, it really doesn't have to be terribly big. It just needs to be something that you're comfortable working with. And I think for that one, I'm going to make all these arcs red. I'm going to use those points of intersection as centers. And I'm going to go draw now a couple more arcs. And this is where it's important to keep the compass setting the same. When I flip that compass around, I'm going to keep it the same and move it to the other center. And now I can go ahead and draw my second arc. I'm going to try not to draw these any larger than I have to to keep my picture from becoming too complicated and busy. I'll use my straight edge now to co-connect the vertex to the point where those intersect. And that ray now is my angle bisector. So there's my two congruent angles. At this point, I'm going to go move to the left vertex, and I'm going to repeat the whole process. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start using that purple point as my center. I'm going to draw a nice arc that intersects both sides of the angle that I'm trying to bisect. And then I'm going to use those two points of intersection as my centers for my next pair of arcs. And then here's the part where I need to be very careful when I flip the compass around. I need to make sure that I keep the same compass setting. And then I'll go ahead and put that second arc in there. Move the compass out of the way. Grab my straight edge and connect the vertex of the angle to the point of intersection of those two purple arcs. So there's my angle bisector making these two blue angles congruent to each other, but not necessarily congruent to those purple angles up at the top of my triangle. Lastly, now I'm going to go bisect the third angle of the triangle, and I guess I'm going to make this one green just to color code and keep everything all simple. So again, a nice arc that intersects both sides of that tri uh, angle. And then I'm going to focus in on the two points where my uh, arc intersects the sides of my angle. And I'll go make a second pair of arcs. And this is the point where, when you flip the compass around, make sure you maintain that same compass setting. Now I'm going to move that compass right out of the way because I'm all done with it. Grab my straight edge. Connect vertex to point of intersection, and I'm going to draw a nice big angle bisector. Notice that mine don't all quite meet in one point, but they're pretty close. I'm going to mark these fellas with three arcs to indicate that they're congruent to each other, but not to the angles on the left over here in blue, and not to the angles on the top up here in purple. And notice that my construction is off by just a little bit because in a perfect world, if I had done a perfect construction, all three of those angle bisectors would have met up at one point. And I did a pretty good job. All right. So in, uh, in, in summary, I want you to take the next page and, like always, wrap your brain around the big ideas and important understandings that you need to take away with you from the video. And then you can go ahead and perform the check for understanding, see if you can apply what you learned in the video to bisect the line segment. 
and to bisect the angle on page 22.